Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday, January 10, 2025. And here follow Oregon's solution to problem 220. There are several ways you can do that problem. He shows you here two different solutions, but there are even more. The good news is that I got correct answers of 64 people. That is impressive. It does mean that many of you were willing to refresh some physics to make sure that you can do it and that you're willing to put in the efforts. That is what I want, that is my objective. So I will continue this year with problems. The next time will not be so easy as this one. So, here is a cube and all sides of the cube have a resistance R. Current goes in at this point and comes out at this point in a circuit and the question is, the question is, what is the equivalent resistor of this cube? In other words, what is the value of that resistor if you would remove the cube and only put one resistor between point 0.1 and point 0.7? The answer, by the way, I can tell you already, the answer is 5 6 of R. So now comes Oregon's solution. Read with me. So if you look here at point 1, let's say the current comes in at 1, then of course one-third of that must go in this direction, one-third in this direction and one-third in this direction because of the, of the symmetry. And you see that here. So if you now go on to point two, one third is arriving at two, so one third must be leaving two. And that means that one six goes up and one six goes there. And so you see that here. One third I over three arrives at two and 1 over 6 goes up and 1 over 6 goes up and you can do that for every point I will not go over that but I will let you look at it a little bit because of the symmetry every time the current reaches a node, it will equally split among each wire connected to that node. And you see that once more here.
So this is self-explanatory. I don't have to go over that in any more detail. So any current that arrives at a point must leave that point, of course. So again here, point one, if current I goes in, it must split in three directions, one, two, three, with I over three. So all the current that comes in must go out here. And so he shows you the same here. In a different way, all comes down to what he just told you. He now adjusts, attaches to the circuit a battery with voltage V. And so current will go in at point one and will come out at point seven. And now he does something that many of you have also done. He applied Faraday's law. Since there is no magnetic field involved here, no changing magnetic field anywhere, the closed loop integral of any closed loop that you choose of E dot DL must be zero. Fire lays law. It would also be Kirchhoff's loop rule because that is a special case of fire lays law. Kirchhoff's loop rule only works if there is no magnetic field changes, which happens to be the case here. So the closed loop integral of E dot DL is zero. So now he chooses for the closed loop, he closes this loop. He goes from one to four, from four to eight and then to seven from 1 to 4, from 4 to 8, and then to 7, and then he closes the loop. One to four is one third I one third I by R. And then from point four to point eight is one six i by r and then going from eight to seven is again one third i times r. So then he is here and now he has to go through the voltmeter 
Het is minus v. En dat is zero. E field, de voltmeter, is in this direction. En zo. So, this is now Faraday's law. And out comes that V equals 5, 6 R times I. In other words, the replacement resistor is 5, 6 of R. He chooses here a more complicated loop just to show you that it gives the same result. So he now goes in at 1 goes to 4 and goes then to 3 and goes then to 2 and goes then to 6 and comes out at 7. He only shows that to show you the consistency that no matter which closed loop you choose the closed loop integral of E dot L must again be 0 which now, of course, is more complicated, but the net result is the same. You find again that the replacement resistance, the equivalent resistance, is 5, 6 R. Now, he chooses a method which is probably the one that you would have used in high school. He doesn't use Faraday's law. So he mentioned that the voltage at points 2, 4 and 5 are the same. 2, 4 and 5 must have the same voltage. And he calls that V of A. And so he replaces that now by three resistors. So he comes in here at V1. He enters here at VA and he enters here at VA and he enters there at VA. So he replaces all three by one resistor, because they all come out to be at VA. And now he applies the same to the node 3, 6 and 8. They also must have the same potential, which he call V of B. So 3, 6 and 8 must have the same potential. And he calls that V of B. And so he replaces now that by three resistors. So now, the circuit can be replaced in this way. That would be your high school way. Three parallel, and then six parallel, and then again three parallel, but all of them in series from V1 to V7. And he comes to the same conclusion, that the equivalent resistance is 5, 6 R. Thank you, Eugen for a very nice solution, for two very nice different solutions.